sharpening him. I died. Friday, <laughs> Friday, we're celebrating the second Sunday of Easter, also known as Divine Mercy Sunday. No. I can't see you there. alive to us that we can meet him personally in prayer, listening and speaking to him as a friend to a friend, heart to heart? Do we touch his words in those wounded in life, whether in their bodies or in their hearts? Do we encounter him in our own joys in the Good Fridays, like I spoke about last week? Do we encounter him in our Easter Sundays and the joys of our friends. Is he alive in our Christian community here at St. Dorothy's? And do we encounter him? Let us pray to the Lord in this Eucharist that he may be real and alive to each and all of us. Let us ask forgiveness from the Lord that too often we are not aware that he is with us. Lord Jesus, you came to take away the sins of the world, and you still bring us the peace of your forgiveness, of our Lord and God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus Christ, you have brought us lasting life, and you still fill us with your life. And our Lord and God, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, pour out on us your spirit of peace that takes all of our sins away. Make us alive with you and raise us up to everlasting life. Amen. And now, as we have completed the penitential rite and have offered our peace for what we have done wrong in the past week, let us give peace to one another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
lots of pictures going around.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one mind and one heart. None of them claimed anything as their own. Rather, everything was held in common. The apostle continued to testify with great power to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And they were all given great respect. Nor was any needy among them. For those who owned property or houses would sell them and give the money to the apostles. It was then distributed to any members who might be in need. Sisters and brothers, the word of God. Oh, 
Tradition tells us that this was the start of the sacrament of confession, which ever since has been bringing other stray sheep back to God. Almost 20 centuries later, after that encounter, in the year 2000, St. John Paul II established his first Sunday after Easter as a universal feast of the church in honor of that divine mercy. In so doing, he was fulfilling the request of our Lord that was made to St. Faustina. Now, being that he was Polish and being that St. Faustina was Polish, is there a little bit of coincidence? Maybe. Just the thought of Christ's mercy fills us with confidence and hope. I know for me it does. 
but it should also fill us with humility. If Christ is so eager to spread the news about his boundless mercy, it's because we need that mercy. It's because evil is a reality in our lives and in our world. Just watch the news every day. And it causes real, real damage that only Christ can repair. This is the tough side of God's mercy, the reality of evil. You know, when you see someone put on Facebook, one uh, Christian pastor uh, actually had the guts to say that he wants all gays and lesbians and all uh, murdered uh, by July or something like that. This is a Christian pastor. This is the evil I need. It's real in the world. Stuff like that. When Jesus spoke to Faustina, he never shied away from this uncomfortable topic. In her diary, she wrote that Jesus said to her, Souls perish in spite of my bitter passion. I am giving them the last hope of salvation. That is the feast of my mercy. If they will not adore my mercy, they will perish for all eternity. Tell souls about this great mercy of mine, because the awful day, the day of my justice, is near. In another conversation, he explained the power of his mercy by explaining the ugliness of evil. Were a soul like a decaying corpse, so that from a human standpoint there would be no hope of restoration, and everything would be already lost. It is not so with God. The miracle of divine mercy restores that soul to its fullness. Evil, our rejection of God's friendship state, separates us from God, the source of all life. So a decaying course is the perfect image to describe a soul in the grips of evil. But <coughs> The most disturbing thing about evil is that unless a person seeks God's forgiveness, which is always available and unconditional, it can lead to eternal separation from our God. It is said, like the children at Fatima, St. Faustina was given a vision of hell in which she saw the torturous sufferings of the condemned. She wrote afterwards that God had given her this vision so that no soul may find an excuse by saying there is no hell, or that nobody has ever been there, and so no one can say what it is like. She also wrote, I would have died at the very sight of these torches if the omnipotence of God had not supported me. Christ's mercy is a big deal, because our evils are a big deal. But Christ's mercy, guess what? It's even a bigger deal. <clears throat> Jesus told St. Faustina that compared to her mercy, her miseries were like a tiny twig being thrown into a roaring fire. Jesus wants to incinerate our wrongdoings and selfish tendencies with his love. He just needs to throw our twigs into flames. In the revelations of his divine mercy, Jesus asked St. Faustina to do a painting, have a painting commission. So I was going to bring you a copy of it, but I forgot. Um, if you've ever seen it before, it shows Jesus standing dressed in a white owl with his right hand raised in blessing and his left hand open to his heart. Out of his heart, there were to be screaming two beams of light, one red and one white. He explained what the rays symbolized. The two rays denote blood and water. The pale ray stands for the water which makes souls righteous. In other words, baptism. The red ray stands for the blood which is the life of souls, which is my favorite, the Eucharist. These two rays issue forth from the depths of my tender mercy when my agonized heart was opened by the lance while I was on the cross. Happy is the one who will dwell in the shelter, for the just hand of God shall not lay hold of him. 
Again, all of this stuff that I'm saying comes out of her diary that she wrote. Today, Jesus is reminding us of the power and the abundance of his mercy. We should be full of joy and confidence at this reminder. But what about all of our brothers and sisters who aren't with us? What about all our neighbors, our colleagues, our classmates, or whatever, who have never experienced Christ's mercy or never heard about it? Jesus died for them too. And he is sending us to be messengers or ambassadors of mercy to them as well. By our kind, truthful words, avoiding all gossip and useless criticism, we shine forth the white light of Christ's mercy. And by our selfless acts of service to others, seeking no reward, except the joy of following Christ, we become extensions of the red ray of Christ's own life given up on the cross. Today, Christ feeds us once again from the very fountain of mercy through what? Through the Eucharist. Let's ask him for the grace to be living images, living paintings of his mercy in this world so wounded by sin. And we as a parish, yeah, we say that love without judgment, etc. Cool. But we also have to be a parish where there is forgiveness and unconditional forgiveness. We have to be examples of that as well. And that was a challenge made to all of us priests at the prison when we were down for the prison meeting by one of our fellow priests that we must be parishes of forgiveness. Total and unconditional forgiveness as well. To each other and to those, as we say every week, to those that we meet out there. That's the only way we're going to spread those rays is by being examples of that. Your turn. You know, that there's a saying that says, a grudge is the heaviest weight you'll ever carry. And you know, it's so easy, I think, in the human condition to stay angry at somebody because you feel they did this or that or the other against you. And you can really get to a point where you can let that go and say, you know what, I, I love that person, I want that person to be all that they can be. And not to quote a line, but you know, not necessarily in the Navy. <laughs> um, but, you know, to, to really be the best that they can be and to be supportive instead of grudgeful. It's very difficult to do that. It's not like you go, wow, this is easy. I'd like to say two things. I'm backing up a little bit other Jim talked about us to be ambassadors. And starting December the 8th, Yesterday, Pope Francis gave a pronouncement declaring a year of divine mercy, and he said the church should become a place of compassion and mercy and not judgment. And we're going to celebrate that for a whole year. There's something for us to keep in mind with what Father Jim talked about today. And the other thing is, what are the last words of the gospel today? So these words were written for your, for you, and a lot of people say, well, you know, they were written right away. They were gospels were written at the time of Jesus. They were written many years after him, and say, whole writing is actually comfort. And the first gospel that's written was Mark. And the others were based on there, except for St. John. And I was thinking about that. And in, the, in those days, it was oral tradition. People spoke about things. And I don't think it was really written down until people said, well, we're going to forget about it if we don't have this oral tradition written down. And that's when it was written down. So when somebody says to you, 
all the Gospels were written down right away, so why should I believe them? Just keep that in mind that in the early church, people spoke about it, they didn't talk about it, they didn't read the Gospel, they knew the Gospel, they knew Jesus, they didn't have to write it down. It was when they didn't know him anymore, people came along and they had to write it down, so they could tell them later on too. Uh, so anyway, keep that in mind, and uh, keep in mind the fact of this divine mercy, and be a master of something. I always find so puzzling since this Pope came to me, that he can be so vocal, so adamant about certain things, and how his I don't know what the word would be, but, uh, you know, the ones that are supposed to steer the rest of the church and the parishioners and what have you are so opposite of him and, and so open about disagreeing with, I mean, you know, in, in fundamental things like the divine, the year of the divine mercy. Let's not be judgmental. And who is more judgmental than you know, and, and in so many other instances, he has over and over tried and said, this is what the church should be about, this is why. And it's like he's speaking in tongues to them or something, you know, they, they just blatantly said, no, we don't think so. And off they go. I don't know, I just... I can't. Of our American bishops like that. Yeah. He's he's up there, just yeah. there. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. But as we used to say in the seminary, uh, watch when he comes to America in September. He might as well take his ring off and put it in his back pocket so that they can kiss it better. <laughs> <laughs> we used to say in the seminary. When uh, Cardinal Medeiros used to come over for supper, the priest would fall over him, but then afterwards, when he wasn't there, they'd be referring to him as the stick and everything. No. So, uh, yeah. I know what you mean. I learned it in the seminary. You know, I think I'm sure I'll be corrected if I'm wrong. <laughs> but um, I remember when speaking of all this and when you were speaking about the priest or bishop, whoever it was, it said about slaying everybody. One thing that came to mind was in the Bible, in the, the New Testament, of days coming close to, you know, the rapture and all that wonderful stuff. The only thing that came to mind was where it said... Um, Beware he who um, beware of false God, false prophets, and um, the other one was where it stated that a great nation shall be that which will create. I'm saying the word. I'm saying what I heard the time goes. Um, will be that which will destroy us all. And sitting back and looking at everything that's going on. When you think about it, I think we're that great nation because we are, you know, our priests, most of them, some of them, and our bishops, they're spewing such hate in disregard to anything that Christ has ever done for us and every, any words that he's ever, he's ever spoken to the point to where we're getting back into that that film of fear, you know, we we got out of it for a little bit, but that's when they said, oh wait a minute, they're no longer fearing us. Let's go ahead and start really kicking at them again and bring that fear back to the Christians or the Catholics. And sitting and I remember a. Pro, uh, newscast where there was a priest, he might have been a bishop, a priest, that told um, someone to go to a cake shop and order a cake 
and I'm sure you all have heard about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and when ordering the cake, order the cake for and ask for two male figures to be on top of that cake. This lady lives, her cake, her shop is in Castleberry, and um, she got so many hate letters and threats and everything, and then one organization came by, and basically what they did was they bought her out. Everything, her cakes or everything that it was. I mean, she was 10000 they gave her about, I think it came out to like $53,000 to get her, to keep her going. And I thought about that, and I thought about today where you said you read about forgiveness. And since I heard about that, I want to go to her shop. And I'm going to let her know, okay, this this is who I am. However, we're not all like this. We all do not believe this. You have your rights. You can believe what you want to, and you can deny anybody that you want to. This is yours, and we have to respect that. And I think those are, the, those are basically what Christ was saying. Even though we're persecuted, we're kicked, and everything else, so was he. But he forgave. He loved. He continued to let it be known that this way is the right way and not the way of your own minds. You know what they say? You want to make God laugh, tell him, what you, tell him your plans. Yeah, there you go. And boy, is he laughing at a lot of us these days. I think that man is probably sitting down in a comedy sitcom and watching what we do and laughing so hard and saying, you know what? When they finally get it, I'll be there again. So that that kind of brought a lot of stuff into my mind when you were saying that. So thank you. I'm done. Okay, bye bye. <laughs> well. Thank you for your thoughts, but just for your information, it's called Cut the Cake, and it's in Longwood, and it was a Protestant, it was a Protestant pastor that wanted them to put on there, we don't support gay marriage. That's what's going on with the religious freedom thingy, you know, in Indiana, and Florida's one of the states that has the law. Right, that's why if you remember when the Hoosier State there, remember I, we tell you about the signing of it, the picture was the Franciscans and the four players. It's like yeah. today's gospel, that picture. Huh? Yeah. Well, that's what we need in your passion. You know, it, it's it's your climbers. Yeah, we have we have to be very careful tonight. I agree with Richard. We might be that country that's the one that's going to bring stuff down. Who knows? We just got to keep on persevering, even the way the salmon going against the strength of society, because that's what Christ did. And as I've said so many times, if we're a true follower of Christ, it's going to be uncomfortable. It's not going to be easy, folks. It's going to be. What was that saying? Uh, one of the movie stars, I'm trying to think of uh, something about a ride. Oh, uh, the first any day of this will be a bumpy ride. It's going to be a bumpy ride. <laughs> if you're going to be a true Christian, it's going to be a bumpy ride. <laughs> Best in your stupid. <laughs> you know, exactly for that. And I think mm-hmm. hopefully the world will listen, like what Anthony was saying. And I did put it on Facebook, if any of you are on there. Uh, the YouTube connection, you can see the whole thing. It's about an hour and 20 minutes where the, the papal bull was proclaimed and then they had Vestas uh, evening prayer for the uh, feast of uh, the divine mercy. So you can see all of that uh, on YouTube. Uh, there. Uh, let us now pray what we believe as our Christian community here in St. Dorothy's as we say, I promise to see what is good for my sisters and brothers everywhere. I promise to work for the realization of God's 
frustration of harmony and right relations of all peoples. We turn to the battles of money and equality. I promise to seek peace and live in peace in one mind in the family, rejecting prejudice and every war and all barriers to unity. I promise to cherish the universe and as a church of my life, working creatively to renew and safeguard the elemental sacraments of air, earth, and war. I believe in God and praise the spirit of creation.
humble himself to touch your heart. Blessed be the Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have this morning to our fulfilled divine work in the hands of the eternal and spiritual tree. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from all my sin. Pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to our eternal parents. Let us pray. Lord, through faith and baptism we have become a new creation. Accept the offerings of your people and bring us to eternal happiness. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is right to give God his thanks for Father, our powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we praise you with greater joy than ever in this Easter season. When Christ became our pastoral sacrifice, He has made us children of the light, rising to new and eternal life. He has opened the gates of heaven to receive His faithful people. His death is our ransom from death. His resurrection is our rising to new life. The joy of the resurrection renews the whole world, while the choirs of heaven sing forever to your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord. to make them holy so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this all of you and eat it. This is my body which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love 
together with Francis the Bishop of Rome, with Terry, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember Virginia, Steve's mom, whom you have called from this life. In baptism she died with Christ. May she also share in his resurrection. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Remember and all the departed in the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and we give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Together.
Father. We have encountered your Son in faith in this Eucharistic celebration. With him by our side, may we be a deeply believing community in which love and sharing are not empty words. A community which keeps dreaming that we can find one another and create a new future together in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who lives with you and with us forever. Amen. Amen. Announcements from the community. I have something. Um, I wanted to give a little history and some thoughts I had this past week. That communion prayer led Jesus right into it, actually. Uh, first of all, I'm thinking about the future of St. Dorothy Catholic Community. Um, who's your charge here? Not me, not Father Jim, not Richard, not the Carroll's Council. God is in charge, and God will see us through whatever comes. I have convinced of that because of what has happened in the past. We started out at DDT, and then we moved from the center down the street to Hope Nights. We were there for a while, and God gave us Father Jim to hear about that became a priest. And then from there we moved, because uh, we moved to the wedding chapel. God said, use the wedding chapel now. So we did, and then, and then they said, we're going to renovate the wedding chapel. So we said, well, we have to move. And would you believe the very day that we said we have to move was the day Matthew Fasso was there. He's not really even Catholic. And he said, you can come to my tavern. And here we are. And it's beautiful, and it don't look like it. I mean, it looks so churchy right in this area, doesn't it? It's beautiful. And so we'll be here until God says, I want you to move. Now, the problem is that we probably do need that eventually when God says it's going to happen. It's not happening now. This is a beautiful place. And we're happy to be here. I'm happy to be here very much. But God may have other plans for us. I, so I was praying today for God's guidance in this because I, you know, one of the things is in all the churches, there's no young people. Look around, there's no young people here today. The other person we have that God has given us is Ron Wynn, who wants to be a deaconess. And that's fine, but, you know, eventually we're going to need more than that. But also, um, I was happy to have Holy Thursday and Good Friday at my house, but you know, we were not able to do more things for that because the space is unavailable. It's a beautiful space, but not always available. So we need to pray that God will show us the way of something that we can afford, something that is in the future, and enjoy this space while we have it. Invite people to come. Father Jim was so right when he said we need to be ambassadors and we do need that and bring that compassion that only say to Arthur. I see this church as a prophetic church, a church that says what Catholicism, Christianity should be all about, welcoming everybody no matter who they are. We welcome everybody. Even people who are not baptized, we welcome them and we're happy that they're here, and we'd like them to be here. But, well, you know, we need to get that message a little further. We're trying. We've had newspaper articles and the like, but it's not really up to me. It's not up to anybody, but it's up to God. So let's just ask God to show us whatever he wants us or she wants us to do in the future. And I was thinking about that. I wanted to share those thoughts with you. Let's enjoy this space. Invite people to come. But think always, what does God have in plan for us for the future? And that's what I wanted to share with you today because I was thinking about it.
I want to say too, everybody that's in reading distance, check out your healthy living section in the Winter Park Observer this, this week on Thursday because I've got an ad that's going to start and I've also got an ad that's going to be in there. Central Florida Senior, which is a new paper that goes out to the senior community in Winter Park and the surrounding communities. Um, I really would appreciate you guys' support and circulation on that because cash is a good thing and even better is my ability to be put in positions where my healing ability can be utilized by God to, to bring good joy and peace and, and soothing things to people that I work with. I, that's really what does it for me. Did you have the uh, Crockpot class? Oh, uh, the Crockpot class didn't happen on Thursday because nobody signed up for it. Here we go again, typical Orange County. Why aren't the family signing up? I just don't I think there it. were 40 people who yeah, signed up. Yeah. Yeah. Not one signed up for it. What well, were the 40? Hmm? What was at the science fair? fair? Did they the, Oh, I thought 40 had signed up. I thought no, it. no, no. There were 40 homeless families in her oh. school. Oh. Oh, oh I thought there were. Nobody signed up. This is, again, typical. There's 40, 40, 40 families, in her families in her school that are homeless are needing assistance. Out of the 40, 20 people said we'll consider it. Out of the 20, no one signed up. Huh. So... As Jim informed me, we will re del we'll talk to her and she'll find out. Maybe reschedule at another time. Yeah. But also, we have to also realize Orange County is falling on the bandwagon to where they're having their this the um, summer summer vacation cut short. Um, so a lot of families right now are trying to figure out what the heck is going on, how we're going to fix this, and everything, so. What are they changing the dates of them going back or something else? Yes. Yeah, them the coming back, passed. going back to school. The state just passed the thing and started mm -hmm. a week early. Really? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it's amazing. I was telling Ron like that I didn't face this in Seminole County, but in Orange County, all right, it's okay. It's alright. We saw a Zebra Coalition, right? Zebra Coalition, uh, Diana and Debbie, uh, I haven't talked to them, but they they each were going to get in touch with Dexter about setting up the, at least the next two classes. And Anthony to go just for said that. it's in his hands. It's not ours. Yeah, yeah. that's what I've come to so. realize. Uh, Even I get frustrated, but it's like, okay. Is something you want us to do or not to do, and I just got to go with you. <laughs> I really wanted to say that. Thank you, Richard, for bringing to our attention that the bakery made $50,000, but the man who refused to serve pizza to gay people was given $800,000. It's just a lot of hate out there. We really do need. Divine mercy. Oh, or no more pizza. Next time you have a wedding, don't have pizza. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. And of course, one of one of my friends said, "What self-respecting gay man would have a wedding with pizza in it anyway?" <laughs> well, it wasn't just one person that said that. A lot of people think, oh, God bless. Okay. 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 Keep it right on. Keep it right on. Keep in mind, we're not a gay church. So right, we're right. Yeah. Uh -huh. gay stuff. Uh -huh. Even though it seems most of the stuff is happening that way. But uh, Sandy, then. Uh, I just wondered on. about the issue of the people who are pursuing us to do that. When I think of with the crockpot not working, it's like we're supposed to do something else. The people, is it REI or what is the group oh, that is? Yeah. Oh, no, what I, the, what I sent out to all of you, and thank you for replying, is when REI, whatever that group is, they wanted to give us a donation. We, you know, you guys told me no, I told them no, and they came back with, but you do work out there and we want to help you, and here's our proposal. And basically, the, the, the response back was the same. Uh, I'm leery. Yeah, it's not, no, they're, they're an up and up. They're, they're, they're an up and up. They're an up and up business. 
I check them out as business. They're not fly by night or whatever. But um, again, like Anthony said, it's up to God. And, and you know, we might say we want to go this way, and God is saying, "Hey, stupid, listen, I want you to go this way." The answer is no. You know, Father Jim, the thing with this group is I feel like they're asking us to make a decision, but we don't have facts. You know, who would, you know, I'm going to buy a house only, I really don't know how much it's going to be. And it's like they say, we want you to do a certain thing, but and we're going to give you a donation. Well, is the donation $5 or is it $1,000? I mean, that would make a big difference if we had a commitment I think, at least from my point of view, if I had a commitment and I knew what was going to come in, then we could say, yes, we as a parish are willing to do this. I agree. But why are they, are they open to giving us, to talking to us about what it means in real dollars? I, I, mean, I, 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 I never heard of, of such a, you know. a donation from the heart. I But we have to know if we, I don't mean what are you going to give me, I mean, is what you're going to give going to allow us to afford what you're asking right. us Right. I'm more about. concerned about the commitment that we as a parish yeah. have to yeah. 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 Exactly. As you can see, and this is the cool thing about our parish. That's what I mean. This way. I look at it as a cool way. And, and Father Anthony and I over the years have had discussions. Even yeah. some heated discussions. Yeah. 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 We have yeah. never mentioned it yet. Uh, <laughs> that we are a parish where you don't come every Sunday. You don't have to come. You know, it's like, you know, we're here. You come, you come. You don't come, you don't come. Um, and being that that's the way we are, we can't commit and say we're going to give X because we have X coming in every week. And all. I hate to make it about money because me and money don't get along ever since I was a little kid because I grew up in a parish where they never, ever, talked about money, ever. And uh, things were done. If something had to be done, Father would say, the boy was on the fritz. And that's it. One sentence, and it was done. You know, that was sort of thing. But we don't have that financial ability. So I think it's better for us at this time to tell our CI or whatever. Our CI, that's not that important. Uh, <laughs> You know, no, not at this time, because right. we're not that big. And in a nice way to say, please, that's our final answer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We don't need to phone a friend or anything. That's our final answer. <laughs> you know, when we're bigger, better, more financially stable, then let's go ahead and pursue it. Let's, you know, we're committing to doing something that we don't necessarily exactly. are able to do all the exactly. time. Exactly. $1,200 is a lot of money. Yeah, and I kind of get that um, every month they're yeah. using, they're inquiring yeah. about that, and they're needing to get rid of some money because of tax reasons. Because a lot, just like with yeah. um, other places, if you have a certain amount of money and you don't get rid of it for a charitable donation, it goes against you, yeah. mm-hmm. as we all know with taxes and yeah. So that could be a possibility that they're trying. Yeah. They're trying to get rid of But taxes for that amount per month is uh, not. Well, I, I, the only comment I wanted to make was in reference to that uh, uh, bakery, the pizza parlor, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, to me personally, uh, the problem with those situations is that you know it's no different than serve, refusing to serve a black person uh, at a counter. I mean, everyone is supposed to be. If you're a public business, you're supposed to serve everybody. And the, uh, there were a number of justices in the Hobby Lobby case that disagreed with the majority decision. And they say, the analysts say, that that decision is going to cause an awful lot of problems into the future because there are going to be uh, uh, mosques, there are going to be all kinds of different religions and congregations that are going to sue for all sorts of funny reasons and all kinds of ways. But just to go back in particular to the, uh, the, the, the fact that these donations uh, to these different people who rejected one thing or another, uh, they say that it's gossip. None of this is verified. I've seen postings on the internet that the uh, bakery received $50,000. 
Then I saw a posting that he received over $100,000, $300,000. Then I saw another posting, a later one, that they were only up to $75,000. None of this is verified. Yeah. And I read a couple of interesting articles in general about politics, about all the different religious questions, the so-called clash between different religions and politics and all, that people are milking this for money. There's a lot of people that would be the, uh, Those fund the account thing? who say terrible things about homosexuality, for instance, and about gays. And you know, this person went to Harvard, went to Cornell, you know, went to Oxford. How can they possibly think that? They're just speaking to a small segment. It's no different than, you know, when you look at the Republicans mm -hmm. who speak to their so-called religious basis or their most conservative sure. base yeah. now in advance of the choice of a candidate. And by the time they get around to choosing a candidate, they're going to be talking to the middle. They're going to be stepping away. Mm -hmm. I just love it when, you know, somebody comes out with some outrageous comment politically and then the fact checkers come back. But he said the opposite six months ago. And he said the opposite of that a year earlier. And it really all comes down to money. I mean, just to finish off, over 20 potential candidates for the Republican nomination for okay. president. They, yeah, one of them those 20 time. people can't possibly be imagining what they're going to be president. They're collecting money. Pure and simple and making contacts, business contacts for the future. Does Huckabee really want to be president? No, he wants to go back on television. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, so it's all kind of, we're all being played with, as it were, and society in general, I think. And it's a shame because it's hard to have serious discussions about serious matters because of all this confusion. That's my little piece for the day. Thank you. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I just wanted to give a Back to the crime pots. I, I have three places I want to contact. Is that okay? Sure, no, to see if we can just maybe uh, move this forward just yeah. a little bit. Yeah. And again, in this parish, you don't have to ask for anything. Just keep it If it doesn't forgiveness. work, then, then we'll Yeah, work. but not to worry. If, you know, we can get on and on and on about politics. Uh, you know, until the cows come home. <laughs> and um, one thing that upset, that upset me, you know, is the uh, the house's decision to make it okay. You know, we talk about pizzas and everything and all of that. I'm looking at human beings, where agencies can discriminate uh, on adoption. That bothers me because Graham and I have three couples that we have known that have adopted children. Not here, but in Colorado. Mm -hmm. And uh, the kids are doing quite fine with two dads or two moms or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I just, uh, I think you're right, Stefan, that with the Hobby Lobby, and this is just broadening. And when I go back to something Father Anthony put in Facebook a long time ago. A long time ago in Facebook land, which is like a few weeks ago, um, yeah. is that why is it the religions preach love but do hate? Yeah. Practice hate. And we see that. Over the one that said gays should be killed and why not lie to lie and why not. The, uh, the guy that uh, for the pizza thing, the whole thing. Why is it? Why is it that we have the hypocrisy seems to be going to uh, rocket levels now all of a sudden? And, we, and I question myself in the parish, where do we fit in? Are we going to be the little sweet? Or are we going to be, if you remember, if you had kids or uh, the book, The Little Mouse That Roared. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I think we have to be as a parish. That we have to be that little mouse that roar. And you can roar by sending emails to the politicians and say you're from St. Dorothy's Catholic community. Don't be afraid. Put the website on it. Don't be nothing high. 
you know, we can't, we don't have bots, we don't have, uh, what do they call it, PACs, we don't have all of that behind us. But we got one blessed thing that we, that the others don't seem to realize, and that we have the gospel behind us and the true gospel. And we center our faith around the universe, which they don't. So who do you think would be more victorious? I'll leave it at that. I don't get political. Don't get, don't get my Boston temper up because we know in Boston we do it legally or illegally, but we do it. We're done from the tea. As I learned as a kid in the 50s, my, my local, they call it alderman back home, or the counselors or whatever they call it. But he went from his jail cell. Okay? And he was still the, the alderman back in the 50s. Yeah. You know, so you know how to do it in a uh, so, so that being the case, let us now ask for God's blessing on uh, our closing hand will be on the 64. Those that are going to the play, starts at 3.30. I went ahead and I made reservations at Firebirds if you'd like to go. You need people here. It's not that far. And then uh, play starts at 3.30. We have the 10 people that are going. And it gets over about 6, 6, 3. <laughs> they got to stop. All right. Okay. Let us pray for God's blessing. Our task is not easy. We are utopians, people dreaming great dreams of being a real community, of building a new and better world in Christ. Oh, that kind of went without discussion. These dreams will never be realized in full because we're limited, we're human, and we're weak. But we can go on trying and growing. This is the challenge of our faith. We can do it if Christ is really alive among us and in us. May God bless all of us for this big task. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As Jesus said today, peace I leave with you. Go in that peace and bring that peace to everybody we need out, out there. there. Okay, number 64. Sorry, we didn't shut up. We talked too much. <laughs> Pretty much. Mm. <laughs>